friends, my name is Lucy. I am an educator at the Green Bank Observatory, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about some of the fun things you'll be able to see in the night sky in August. Now I'm going to do this using a free open source software called Stellarium. Now you can download Stellarium onto your PC, Linux, or Mac, or you can use your web browser to mess around a little bit with it. I really like this planetarium software. Uh, it's really easy to use and pretty fun to mess around with. So I have set my Stellarium at 10 p.m. on August 15th, 2020, but all the things that we're gonna talk about today are going to be visible in the night sky from June through October, so all summer in most parts of the Northern Hemisphere and some parts of the Southern Hemisphere as well. I have set my location to Green Bank, West Virginia, because that's where I am, but you should be able to see all of this stuff where you are as well. Now, we are currently facing east, and I'm going to scroll up a little bit so we can see these three very bright stars. The first one up here is Vega which is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra. Now, Lyra means the lyre. A uh, lyre is sort of a harp-like instrument that the ancient Greeks played. The next star that we're gonna look at is Deneb, which is in the constellation Cygnus. Now, the name Deneb comes from the Arabic word meaning tail, which makes sense because the constellation it's in, Cygnus the swan, it's at the tail end of that constellation. So you got the head of the swan and the wings of the swan and Deneb, the tail of the swan. And then the third, uh, excuse me, the third star we're going to talk about today is Altair. Altair is in the constellation uh, Aquila, excuse me, not Cygnus. Aquila, the eagle, and it comes from the Arabic word for eagle. Now, Altair is a pretty interesting star, in my opinion. It is about two times wider than the sun, so its radius, or the uh, line from its outer edge to its center point, is two times bigger than that of the sun. So it's about two times wider than the sun. However, it spins much, much faster than the sun. It spins 70 times faster than the sun. Not 17, not 17, 70, 70. And because this star spins so fast, it actually bulges out or flattens. And I have a very sort of high-tech, fancy uh, way of explaining this. This, this is uh, a very expensive instrument called a uh, string on a stick, also referred to as a physics stick. But to be fair, any stick that obeys the laws of physics is a physics stick, so basically any stick can be a physics stick if it believes in itself. So, when you're the sun, when you're a star like the sun and you're rotating, you know, at a pretty leisurely pace, once every couple weeks, you're gonna get maybe some bulging, some of that plasma or the stuff that the sun is made out of is gonna sort of bulge out a little bit, but not that much. But if you're a star like Altair and you're spinning really fast, all that plasma, all that stuff is gonna bulge out because of how fast you're spinning. So you see the difference between spinning pretty slowly and spinning really fast. Now this causes something called gravity darkening. Now because Altair is bulging out at the middle, the middle or the equator part of Altair is, or has less pressure than its poles. Now, if you think about it, this makes sense. So if you're in an elevator with a whole bunch of other people, of course, you're all wearing masks 
and you shouldn't really be in close proximity to too many people anyway. But let's just say this is pre-COVID, we're all stuck in an elevator together, and it's getting kind of squished, getting sort of claustrophobic and hot. It's getting a little, little squishy in here. That's a high pressure situation. But if you bulge out that uh, elevator a little bit, or if you open those elevator doors, some people can leave and you got a little bit more room to stretch. It might cool down a bit. You won't feel as claustrophobic. You won't feel as anxious. Now, plasma follows this same principle of once you're really squished up and in a high pressure environment, plasma or the stuff that that star is made of is going to get hotter and thus brighter. But if you bulge out a little bit and you've got a little bit more elbow room, you're going to be less hot or cooler and thus less bright. So this gravity darkening means that the equator or the center part or the bulging part of Altair is going to be dimmer than its pole. So it's actually a weird gradient sort of football shape. I think that's cool. Now Altair Deneb, oh, spelled that a little bit too far. Altair Deneb and Vega create an asterism called the Summer Triangle. And it's visible, you guessed it, in the summer. It makes this sort of right angle sort of situation across the Milky Way galaxy. So these three stars made up a lot of different stories in different cultures. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what the Chinese and other East Asian cultures thought was going on with these three stars. So I'm going to switch to a Chinese star lore. And we'll talk a little bit about the star Altair, or as the Chinese refer to it, the cowboy star. Now, Altair, of course, was a cowboy, but he, his job was to look after the celestial emperor's cow. So these are the most important cows in the sky because they're the emperor's cows. I don't, I don't know why an emperor would have cows, but he does and Altair's job is to take care of them. Now Altair meets a cute little lady named Vega. Vega is the emperor's weaver. Her job is to make beautiful fabrics for the emperor to wear and she's very good at her job she makes some of the most gorgeous fabrics that you've ever seen in your life and everyone's very jealous of the celestial emperor because he has these beautiful clothes that are made out of this weaver's this weaving girl's fabric so they meet and they fall in love of course this is how these stories go you have a cowboy and a weaver girl and they're in the sky they're going to meet and fall in love but they ended up being one of those like really annoying couple. You know, you know the annoying couples that are like, oh, sorry, I can't hang out today. I have to go hang out with my boyfriend. Or like, oh, I can't do anything except talk about my girlfriend because she's the most important. You know those couples that like lose all personality outside of the relationship? Yeah, she, they ended up being one of those couples. Which is fine, you know, live your life. I'm not going to tell the weaving girl and the cowboy what to do. But this ended up being a bit of a problem for the emperor because the guy who was supposed to be in charge of the emperor's cows started hanging out with his girlfriend a little too much. And the cows weren't getting taken care of. They were going a little thirsty. They were looking a little rough. And this was a bit of a problem. And the weaving girl, or Vega, she uh, wasn't doing so great either. She was hanging out with her boyfriend so much that she stopped 
weaving beautiful fabrics. And the emperor had to wear the same clothes over and over again, which, you know, the celestial emperor is a fashion icon. You can't, he can't be seen in public with the same robes on twice. That's just, the paparazzi would never allow that uh, to go unnoticed. So the celestial emperor has had enough. He's annoyed. He's going to put a stop to this. So he puts the cowboy on one side of the great celestial river and the weaving girl on the other side. And of course the celestial river is the Milky Way galaxy. Now the weaving girl and the cowboy, you know, they cried a lot because obviously they had to break up because their boss uh, thought that they were shirking their duties and they weren't allowed to see each other anymore and it was just very traumatic. Now, in eastern parts of Asia, there is a large population of magpies, which are black birds that uh, migrate uh, south for the winter time. And these birds, when they're migrating, there's so many of them that they turn the sky black. And once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh month, or the seventh of the lunar calendar, um, this year it's going to be on August 25th, the Chinese celebrate the Kichi Festival, or the Double Sevenths Festival when the magpies are migrating and they're blacking out the sky. And this is because those magpies, according to legend, form a bridge over the Milky Way, or the river of the Milky Way galaxy. So the weaver and the cowboy, or the cowherd, can meet for one day a year. They meet on this bridge and it's very romantic. So this Kichi festival, is sometimes referred to as the Chinese Valentine's Day. It's the day when, or it's the holiday when couples buy each other flowers and presents and chocolate and that sort of thing. Now, a similar festival with a similar story is celebrated in other parts of East Asia, like Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. And Deneb is called apparently the celestial ford or the bridge over this uh, Milky Way or the river of the Milky Way, the celestial river. So this right there is where they meet. So we've got Vega, Altair, and Deneb, this summer triangle asterism. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you're interested in some more fun astronomy observatory videos, you can find them on our Facebook page. I hope you guys have some clear skies and a great night. See you later.